Well, I'd like to walk through the implementation of this uh, moderately complicated state diagram in LabVIEW. As we look over the state diagram, we see that we have a, a number of states. Looks like we have nine altogether. If we look at the case structure, we see each one of those states is a separate case or a separate subpanel. We can scroll through all of those very quickly and see what's there. We've got three inputs, A, B, and C. I'm using Boolean controls for the inputs. We have five outputs, D through H, and I have Boolean indicators for the outputs. Over in this area, I'm using a feedback node for the state register and, rep and indicating its state value. This structure imposes a synchronous reset. Here we see the reset button down here and that forces the value zero into the feedback node when it's active. So I use the value zero for the power on reset as well as the synchronous reset. Now the output of the case structure normally goes into the feedback node. So when the feedback node is generating the value zero, then we pick this particular sub diagram and that generates the next state value and the outputs that I'm indicating here. Let's take a look at the next panel. In state one, we take one of two possible paths based on the input signal B. So we either go to state two or state one. We activate outputs F and G in this state as well. Now, if you look carefully here, you'll see the characteristic um, look of the tunnel that has use default if unwired option set. When it's white, that's your indication that one or more of the cases does not specify a value for that tunnel. So I normally use the use default if unwired. Now in state two, it has an, a number of exit paths here. First one is based on simply considering A. If A is active, we go to state three. However, if state or if input A is not active, then we need to consider what's going on with B. If B is active, we go to state four. If it's inactive, we go to state five. Let's take a look at state three. Now in this case, we see that there's only one condition that takes us out of the state, and that's when all three inputs are low. That takes us to state seven. Otherwise, we stay in state three. All right, state five is also fairly elaborate in that it has a number of different exit paths four altogether. Let's take a look at state five. Now in this case, I found it a little bit easier to first bundle all three of the input signals together into a three-bit array, or what we can think of as a three-bit bus. That's the build array node that was used for that purpose. The element on the top corresponds to our least significant bit. And I want to think of the order as ABC. So C is my least significant bit here. A is the most significant bit. So it gets wired on the bottom element here. Now this three bit array is then interpreted as a numerical value using array to num right there. And that then connects to a case structure here to translate easily the various possibilities that we have. So all three being low takes us to two. So that would be zero. Three corresponds to A is low and B and C are both high, which takes us to four. 
5 has the binary pattern 101, takes us back to 1. And while I don't actually have the value 7 explicitly indicated on the diagram, I can use the uh, 7 comma default, and I can simply type that any, any place I like, and that handles my otherwise condition that takes us to state 6. All right, lastly, I'm using the wait until next millisecond multiple to paste the loop. And at the, at the uh, present time here, I'll be using a thousand milliseconds. And that effectively gives us a one hertz clock signal or a one second period, if you will. Notice when B is active, we advance to state two Looks like we then go to 4 and then to 8. If we look at this, we see that when B was active in state 2 and A was low, that advanced us to state 4. Okay, state is back to 0. Supposing I want to take this path. I'll take it out of reset. We watch it go to state 1, 2, 3. Now as long as any one of those signals is high, we stay in state three. So I'll deactivate those. Sure enough, we advance to seven and then advance to eight. So we've tested a, a number of the paths here. Let's reset. And let's see if I can take this path to state five. Now you'll notice that we have to do some quick switching on input B to make that happen. So now in this mode, we see that it's oscillating between states five and two. And that's because of the present value of our inputs. All right, so this illustrates some basic manual simulation to confirm that the state diagram has been implemented properly.